Was it a shellacking? Uh, I'm going to go, hey, let's do this thing. You asking me? I'm going to take you back. I'm going to take you back to last Thursday's game against the Giants where it was a one-score game in the fourth quarter. It can get away, and it can get away from you late, but I sat up there, and so did all the gamblers, like, oh, my gosh, it's minus 10. They better do something, and they covered. But yesterday, down five with the, hey, that was a closer game than uh, what the final score uh, indicated. How about that? Yeah, I I never get worried unless it's a one-score game and the team has the ball that's down, and that never happened yesterday. You want to know why? Because the 49ers answered. He threw, he hit Ayuk on a rope. If it was 25, 40 yards every time. And for the people out there trying to troll me, uh, I am putting something else in the file of Brock Purdy. Uh, no concerns with the long ball. Those throws to me qualify, and your boy has been on fire, man. He just, I, I don't know where this thing is going with Brock. Check this But I put that yesterday. in the file that uh, no concern anymore, no, no pips, performance improvement plans for Brock Purdy and the long ball. Drew Down giving it to me on the YouTube uh, first. Uh, North Cal Credit Union chat. I'm just like, man, he's doing, he's, he's pitching a perfect game, dude. Let's go to uh, Steve in San Jose. He's got one thing he likes and one thing he's a, a little concerned about. What's going on, uh, Steve? How you doing? Hello, gentlemen. Hey, uh, great show as always. Thank the, you. the one thing I love, if you remember last night or yesterday's game, when Brock Purdy did that quarterback sneak to get the touchdown, there was a TV angle that had his face laying out on the ground. He had a big old smile on his face, and I just thought he uh, emoted just so much joy and happiness. He felt good. He's feeling good. And I think the 49ers as a club, they feel good. Um, they're just happy to be winning, and I, I enjoy that joy. Um, you should. Uh, let's see. And then there's also the thing I'm concerned about, nitpicky thing. I think the offensive line has had passing grades these first four weeks, but they're going to have their midterm exam coming up against those Cowboys. Their uh, pass rush is you know, going to be their best test so far. So we'll see how they stand up. And uh, let's go Niners. Thanks, guys. Appreciate the call, Steve. Yeah, the offensive line. I mean, I think I don't think they've had a weakness. <laughs> uh, we haven't brought up McKivitt's name since we week two starting or week one with Pittsburgh. Yeah, he. Uh, so anytime you don't notice the offensive line, it's usually uh, true. Williams, usually your boy was thing. great yesterday. How about that boy, buddy? You didn't notice him? Uh, no, I didn't. <laughs> what, you're grading for Pro Football Focus nah, now? No, PFF, no. Nah, uh, let me go. Uh, your great throw on a line from uh, Drew, uh, from Brandon Ayuk. Where the way? Was it Evan on the throw? Uh, <laughs> there was part of me that felt that. That was one throw. Oh. The others were ropes, but I, I get what Evan was saying. I can't, I can't find yeah, it now. He, he said that the two dudes were there waiting. Normally that ball's intercepted, but he By was there. How about this? Uh, <laughs> Receipts. Evan, the uh, producer, 49er fans, how do you feel about this on that uh, throw to Ayuk? <laughs> This is from Evan, not me. <laughs> Evan not Steinmetz. Man. By the way, <laughs> if Cardinal safety turns his head around, he picks that throw to Ayuk. It's not even snitching, boy. Yeah. Hey, hey, but they didn't, right? That's all that counts, man. They, they, ha they didn't. They haven't. Stani, what about? Uh, I'm not the Cardinals. I gained their respect yesterday. Oh, and they're, I, and they're relieved about that, Goo. They are so happy. Well, now I'm going to give you a three you, for that. But that, that they was, are so Tim happy that you now no, believe in them. No. The, the NFL world is like, okay, these dudes ain't tanking for Caleb, Will uh, well, Caleb right. Williams. Yeah. Kyler Murray, take your time, Jack, because Dobbs looks like he knows what he's doing. They ran some ex exotic type of plays offensively. Their run scheme, I was like, okay. Gannon was in his bag? He was in his bag. Bad. Oh, uh, but the the fake punt, all that stuff. I was like, okay, and they're going to see the Niners again. But back to Brock Purdy, Stani, do you not give him credit for going thirteen to thirteen? Because this is happening Why more not? often than Why not. Why wouldn't you give him credit for I, that? But a lot of people are always oh, the system. We mm -hmm. saw Jimmy Garoppolo in this system, and it wasn't fine tuned like Brock. So. I'm just sitting back like this kid's off to a great start, man. And you know what? A bulletin a release here, Steiny. Mm -hmm. We're never going to see Brock Purdy in another offense until he get relinquishes this job. This is it. 
and he's mastering it right now. Where to go? Where to check down? Oh, there goes IU. We're up five. I could get nervous and throw a oh no throw, but I'm going to hit Brandon IU. Now, that was the one IU was wide open. Nobody was near him. Alex is in the city. What's up, Alex? How you doing, man? Hey, guys. Always fun talking to you the day after a win. Yeah. I, I have three points, actually. Okay. Oh, hey. no, that's obviously great, but I think we're getting a little ahead of ourselves. We haven't really played anybody outside of the Rams. I think they're potentially the only playoff candidate out of the four teams. So I think we're way ahead of ourselves. Also, with the Rams, you know, they exposed the problem that we've had for going since last year. The secondary is still suspect. You saw KC light them up last year. Uh, again, the secondary seems like they can be exposed if the offensive line can't rush the quarterback like we used to. The second point, Brandon Ayuk and Purdy, oh my God, that combination is going to become one of the most deadly this season, I think. I think they're going to be like Damn. one of the top three duos in the league. The last point, you know, you guys mentioned how C-Mac is probably the most important uh, player on the team and how we can do without Purdy before him. I think with the Philly game last year, we saw that, you know, with Purdy's connection with the rest of the receivers and the team is too important and that he's still more valuable than C-Mac. Ooh, That's it. Right. Thanks for the call. I mean, I think they probably need both of them at this yeah. point. Um, I, I'm starting to believe that if you, uh, they, this team, Tell me. they, they got to have McCaffrey and they got to have Purdy. <laughs> to me, those are the two. If they lose one of those guys, it's, it's big trouble. So you don't give any credence no. to the fact that they I'm got going weapons. years past. No, years past, Donnie, that they didn't have McCaffrey. And they got they were good enough yeah. and creative no. enough. Kyle was to get to to the NFC Championship game two years in a row. Yeah, I don't see it. Not not with how much they rely on him. I, I don't see it. Like McCaffrey has got he, to be man. the guy because I think what, what what can happen is if he's if he's the guy you're relying on for a half of your offense, half of your offensive touches or 40% of your offensive touches. If he's not there, those touches got to, everybody else is going to have to do a little more. And then when you ask those players to do a little bit more, we don't know how they'll do. They may respond, but I, like, I, I just, the idea that McCaffrey gets, uh, you know, McCaffrey's like Curry, you know, everybody plays off McCaffrey and, that's why you got to have him, I think. Let me ask you this. Before McCaffrey was a Niner, and this is just goes to sports and life in general, Stani, had you forgot how good he was? I did. Well, I think everybody he did. Would, otherwise, otherwise they wouldn't have gotten him for what they got him for. You know, and now all of a sudden it's like, this dude, is, he can do it all. And if I could put handcuffs on you real quick here and force you to do something, because I know you give the Cowboys defense credit. They they are a badass defensive unit, Donnie. I would make you watch the game with me last year to where they basically shut the Niners down running the ball. McCaffrey. It was handoff to McCaffrey, tackle. Handoff to McCaffrey, tackle. Those lanes and gaps were filled. And it's almost criminal that Dallas didn't win the game, but Brock Purdy then did not mess it up knowing, okay, I, I, I can't throw the oh no throws. But Stiney, I can't wait to see part two of that, uh, the next Sunday night. But it has been done to where you kind of contain Curry. I'm talking about McCaffrey, but yet, um, Brock Purdy can lead you down and score. It's just that I can't wait to see part two of that. Yeah, uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. A lot of fun next week. Uh, let's go to Dave. Dave's in Lafayette. What's up, Dave? How you doing, man? What's up, fellas? You know, I'm, I'm excited about this 4-0. You, you've heard me go back and forth on Trey Lance, but Brock is that man. Um, the, the reason I called was Brandon Ayuk. He, that's Timothy right there. That man... <laughs> We need to do everything in our power to keep him on the team. I don't care what we have to sacrifice. That is our number one receiver. The only other thing I got is everybody's talking about trading for a corner to strengthen that DB room. You know what? I'm more worried about the only thing that stands out to me as a weakness is Colton McKivitz got juked by a bum yesterday, and he is, he is proven to be the weakness on the line. That's all I got, fellas. Appreciate the call. Appreciate the call. Well, things happen, but overall, McKivitz wasn't a problem. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't notice too much. Uh, doing the job, then. Yeah, exactly. The uh, 
Let's go out to Ryan. Ryan's in Los Gatos, wants to talk about the 49ers D. What's up, Ryan? How you doing? What's up, guys? It's Brian. But uh, All right. What's hey, up, Brian? I just want to say I appreciate you guys. You guys make uh, being a Bay Area sports fan better for all the sports. I love you guys. Thank Thanks. You. Uh, appreciate it. Then I want to say, what do you guys think about the the Niners defense? The fact that we got the Arizona Cardinals rolling the dice and going for it on fourth down, making risky decisions. I love that. I love that. That was my favorite part about the game. It didn't really pay off, but it shows hey, if teams are doing that in the future, we might be getting interceptions, fumbles. I, I like that. What do you guys think about that? You mean the what? You mean where where the Cardinals went on it on yeah. fourth and seven? Mm-hmm. A couple times, yeah. A couple times they're going for it when it doesn't even make sense. If they don't make it, we're in good scoring position. Yeah, I know. It was beautiful to see that. We're de- we're demanding respect. Well, I think yeah. Once you get down twenty-one three, I think they got a little desperate, obviously, and and it didn't cost them. Um, they had one, I believe, fourth and two, fourth and three. They went for it and got it. Too. Yeah, made yeah. the game, Stoney. It was twenty-one to three. I'm like, okay, go cut the grass. Not yet. I wonder if uh, if there's anything to the fact that because the 49ers offense has taken a step up, to me. if their defense is doing anything differently. In other words, if you know your team's going to score 30 as opposed to your team's going to score 21, does that change your defensive philosophy at all? Do you become more bend but don't break as opposed to trying to make aggressive plays where you may end up making a mistake? I wonder if you, if you ask Wilkes. Steve Wilkes that, if he would say that they're doing everything they've always done, it's exactly the same, or whether uh, maybe they are playing a little bit more conservative. Um, well, we saw, we saw them it. blitz Stafford in the second half of the Rams game to kind of make him get rid of the ball, but I'll put a little rat on the table, a mouse tiny brought right. to you by Atco. Once the, we heard the announcement that Hargrave was coming, I thought this was going to be like a doomsday front, like, oh, my gosh, Bosa, Hargrave, watch out, sack, 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 or almost sack, sack, sack. And I just don't, I don't know what you and Evan think, but I don't, I don't, I didn't have that feeling yesterday. I know Hargrave got to the quarterback, but when you got the likes of himself and Bosa, I'm, I just want major, major disruption. And again, I don't think we've seen that thus far. Bosa you had a sack yesterday? Uh, Hargrave did. Uh-oh. Yeah. Well, let me do the math here. Oh, here you they, they, Let me do this. <laughs> the four, one, two, Evan, three, four. <laughs> and then there were three playoff games last year. Hey. One, two, two. I think two. I was the first to point that out. Uh, so, Bosa, one sack in the last seven games. Well, one thing you've omitted uh, since we're doing numbers with Bosa. How mm-hmm. much was that contract? One, two, two. Because that supersedes all that. Yeah, it does. Yeah. It does. And I'm sure, uh, I'm sure he's a big reason why Hargrave's playing well. And, and, um, uh, Dre Jackson, too. I mean, the 49ers. Yeah. Um, 888 957 is the number. Steiny and Guru with you. We're at Chase Center in San Francisco. It's Warriors Media Day today. It's hoop time. And we're going to get some Golden State Warriors uh, executives and players uh, to join us. It is Media Day. That I means the uh, season is on the brink. The NBA season is on the brink. And uh, it's going to be a fun year for the Warriors. Uh, Draymond Green uh, is hurt right now. It looks like he's going to miss... Uh, a few weeks or saying. may not uh, may not start the regular season um, healthy, but of course that would uh, play right into the hands of not having to make a decision on the starting lineup. <laughs> that thing's just going to go away if Draymond Green is going to miss the first week or two of the season. So you're telling me there's a possibility? This is buzzard luck, as Norm would say. Oh, they open up against Kevin Durant, his first time actually playing in front of fans at Chase. And Dre might not be there to guard him. Ah. Would Dre really guard him anyway? He would be on him some. Dre don't run from no assignments, Tony. Please. Heart foul. <laughs> uh, that's a Wiggins assignment, I would think, uh, on on uh, on KD. But we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Uh, Warriors' first practice is yesterday, is uh, tomorrow, uh, and media day is today. What else uh, happened uh, around the league that caught your eye? Patrick Mahomes, Donnie, they, they they got a victory, but a again, outside of uh, 
Taylor Swift, I've learned what a Swifty is now, but outside of Taylor Swift's boyfriend, I don't think uh, he has too many options, and I'm just wondering. There were there were some throws that you normally don't see from him. I, I just don't think Kansas City offensively is flowing like they used to flow. Now, does that mean, Goo, they can't win it and hoist up the Lombardi? No, but I'm watching that, and... Uh, again, the morning roast was, can you name five, the, at the end of their program, can you name five quarterbacks you would take over Purdy or eight or wherever, but st about playing better than Purdy is this year in his offense. Stani, that list is shrinking. That list is really shrinking, and that was my big takeaway. Like Brock Purdy, the way he's playing in this offense, we, well, we can let's see Let's have a little fun. All right, let's do it. So there, he's a top five? Is that what you're saying? I, yeah, top five for me right now. Herbert? He's playing two things. He's playing the defense and his coach, but I'm going to put Herbert up there. I would take Herbert, Mahomes, Josh Burrow. I told you, Stein, he needs to be rested. About uh, uh, Josh Allen. I'll give Josh Allen that because he had good. Okay, so that's three. Uh, this is where. Help me, Evan. You guys help me. But uh, this is where. It ain't Dak. Stafford? <sighs> I wouldn't take Stafford over. You know what? Last week I said I did, and they went overtime and won. All right, put I'll give you Stafford. That's four. Uh, Tua. Uh, he was Dua Dua yesterday. Uh. <laughs> uh, we got Josh Allen, so I got four. So uh, no, no Tua. Uh, yeah, I ain't putting Tua. Thank you, Spadoni. Lamar Jackson. Uh, you know I've never oh. been a fan. Uh, Jalen Hurts, I ain't putting Hurts in there yet for me this year. All right. Yeah. Okay. Well, you're you're viewing it yeah. from uh, it ain't 49ers rose colored uh, glasses. I don't and, got them. Yeah. Who? Lawrence. Trevor Lawrence. I mean, what about last week? He had a good well, game Trav, against Atlanta, but last week they looked like trash. My so point yes is no. he's he's in the no, conversation. These are good hard decisions. Yeah. I'm asking you to come no, on. Yeah. I'm, those but guys. See, when we say top five. Well, that's, okay. that's, let's relax. Well, we can't go resume because Brock would lose that. I'm talking about the immediate right now who's playing better in their offense. And we right, might only have three on that list you just wrote down. 888-957-9570 is the number. Matt Steinmetz, Daryl, the Guru Johnson with you. We are at Chase Center uh, in downtown San Francisco for Warriors Media Day. We're going to be joined by uh, Mike Dunleavy and some Warrior players uh, as the show rolls on. But it's the 49ers that uh, is getting a lot of attention today from us. They win 35-16. And uh, I want to talk to 49er fans about how they felt about that game uh, yesterday. Do you look at that game and say, that's a complete game? That's another good effort by the defense? Yeah, they gave up a couple long drives, but anytime you hold the team to 16, you'll take that. They had five touchdowns. Uh, McCaffrey was terrific again. Do you look at that, if you're a Niner fan, as a complete victory? Or do you look at that as, as a game where, you know, the Cardinals were able to do some things and, and we don't know how good the Cardinals are. They look like they play hard, that's for sure. But how are you viewing yesterday's win by the San Francisco 49ers? 888-957-9570 is the number. I mean, the Cardinals... What they have? 375, Damn. 380 yards of total offense, something like that. They ran for over 100. They passed for uh, the high twos. So, I don't know. Is there anything to see here, 49er fans? I'll tell you what, for me, Stani, I think it's a fair question. And you pointed out early that the Eagles have handled their business and they're 4-0. But I do watch that game, and Arizona's helmet was really green to where – Okay, what if that was Jalen Hurts? What if that was uh, uh, Smith that he was throwing to and giving the ball to Swift offensively? Defensively, I feel like this Niner team, there's two or three levels they need to get to by the time it's playoff time. Can they get there? And maybe the question is, not nitpicking, why aren't they there yet? 888-957-9570 yeah. is the number. The 49ers, 4-0. Everything's clicking for the 49ers. After the last two years, the way they've started the season, you've got to be ecstatic if you're a San Francisco 49er fan. They're 4-0. 
They found a quarterback. They've got a great running back. They got a great receiver. See, I called him great. I appreciate uh, that. Or he's uh, he's on his way to being a great receiver. Uh, George Kittle still on this team. Debo Samuel still a factor. Their defense. Uh, Nick Bosa, Fred Warner. I mean, they got names. They got names all over the uh, their offense and defense. And uh, you know, secondary the is all standing. We didn't name yeah. anybody there. 